productivity is now inverse to employment in most sectors. The most advanced form of mechanization is called cybernation, which combines robotics and computerization. Essentially, the computer is the brain of the machine and instructs the machine what to do. Cybernated machines today are probably the most powerful and influential invention humanity has ever created. The possibilities of these tools are on pace to changing the society in profound ways, including the freeing of the human labor force and exponentially increasing production efficiency. The fact is, there is very little in the way of basic labor that cannot be automated. It is really a simple matter of our social intent. These machines do not need breaks, vacations, insurance, and they are not subject to the emotional inconsistency that we humans tend to fall into that makes us you know, less consistent in our performance. Here are some examples of this technology. Dynamic catching and holding. My favorite, dribbling. Optical tracking, of course. Throwing. Tweezer manipulation. Uh, I like this one, the dynamic catching of a cell phone. Here is an automated kitchen in Japan. Here is a fully automated waitstaff, if you will, in Germany. The possibilities are truly profound. Even as unintuitive as it may seem, I think com complex surgery is on pace to full automation and, based on the pattern, will likely become much more reliable than the human hand. The bottom line is that it is socially irresponsible for us not to recognize this pattern and maximize the potential. We must disregard the traditionalized emotional whims we might have. For example, I was reading in a book about technological development in the early 20th century and there was a story of a woman who refused to buy a new refrigerator because she liked the ice man. She liked the ice man who came and brought ice to put in the ice box, which is a wonderful quaint notion, but it isn't progress. That's romanticism. And I'm not putting down romanticism. I'm a romantic in many ways, but I also recognize that progress means we have to change our values. Life is about adapting. If our scientific ingenuity can create mechanisms that can increase the efficiency of production and overcome scarcity and, turn, and in turn give us more free time to pursue larger interests, then we have no choice but to fall in line and change our values accordingly. Machines are extensions of human attributes. They are tools. And not only can they allow for greater productivity, they can also relieve us, as we've seen, of trivial monotonous labor, enabling possibly a cultural paradigm shift that we can't even imagine. Now, it's usually about this time that someone says, hey, wait a minute, but what will I do? What will I do with myself if machines are doing things? This is, of course, an amazing question if you think about it and goes to show how conditioned we have really become. Um, 